Before you get started with the lesson, let me give you a quick overview of how to use this series of videos. This is a series that covers Microsoft Office 2013 using documents, spreadsheets, and presentations. I'm a teacher. I work in Tolleson, Arizona at a high school called Westview High School. These assignments are selected to be exactly like what you would do in the real world. So using Office is what you'll use in a real office or in a real business. There is an assignment book that accompanies every video. Each page in the assignment book has a checklist of the things that you should accomplish in each lesson. Watch the video lesson to see how things are done. After you create your own document using the video as a model, you may have some modifications such as your own business names or your own paragraphs or your own data, but it'll look very similar. Now you can either watch the whole video through at one time or pause it as you go through it. Finally, print the document and your classroom teacher will grade it. So now, let's move on to your next assignment. Welcome to assignment number four with Microsoft Excel 2013. What you see on the screen in front of you is a grade book for our employees. We're going to give them a series of tests for the company, a safety test, a company philosophy test, a financial skills test, and a drug test. And then we will give them employment based on their testing level. So let's assume these are all new employees and they are testing after their job interview. So this is the completed spreadsheet. Let's start from scratch and build it one place at a time. So I'm going to File and choose New and a blank workbook. Let's start by giving this a title in the first cell. Let's call it Gradebook. And we're going to keep people's names in here. So we'll put last name here and first name. Now you can see that I've typed in the names of the employees that I used from my payroll spreadsheet. You can just copy and paste these names in, or if you like to retype different names, you can. But we're going to use up to line number 20 for those that are going to be taking the company test. Now you notice that I put the titles of each test in C1, D1, E1, and F1. The first test is called Safety Test. The next one is called the Company Philosophy Test. The third one is the Financial Skills Test. And then finally, the Drug Test. You notice that these words all run into each other. Let's do a format on these cells to make them fit better. I'm highlighting all four cells and up here on this button, it's called orientation, I click it and let's choose rotate text up. And now each of these cells is written vertically. So it allows us to make the columns narrower. Now how much is each test worth? Well, let's fit in here in B2 and let's put in here points possible. This will show us what the maximum grade is for each of these. Let's say the first one is worth 10. The next test is worth 20 points. The financial test is worth 100. And the drug test we're just going to have as a pass or fail. So it is worth one point. Notice that I need to make the column E a little bit wider because 100 doesn't fit in the square very well. Now, all we have to do next is, starting with John Kern, is invent a number. How many points did John earn? And so on. Now you can see that I've entered numbers for every one of my employees. So the maximum is 10. Nobody has more than 10 points, do they? Oh, Trent Mann got an 11. But then over on this side where it says drug test, you notice that everybody has a 1 or a 0. So there are two employees that got zeros. That means they failed their drug test. Next, let's calculate the percent that they earned for each of these tests. I want to take the titles and copy them. So I'm highlighting all four of these. Right click on one of them and choose copy. And let's put them in the next area over. How about column H? We'll start with column H. Now what would be the formula for a test and the percentages? Well, you would take the equals and we'll take this number 10 and divide it by the points possible. Divide it by 10 and press enter. This turns out to be a 1. Actually I want it to say 1%. So I'm going back to the ribbon and choosing the home tab and you'll find in here the formatting for percentages. There's a percent sign. So on the safety test John Kern earned 100%. Now I'd like to copy and paste this formula so that all the percents are shown for this assignment. 
Let's just fill it down and see what happens. Now there's a problem. This one says divide by zero error. This one says 80%. This one says 90. 90%. No, this one says 100%. It should say 90. So it's not working like we thought it would. Let's double click on this 100%. Do you see what's being divided? It says take C7 and divide it by C5. Really what we want to do is take C7, the score that Wendy received, and divide it by the points possible. And so this error is what's called a relative referencing error. It's counting back two cells and dividing by two cells above it. We need to use absolute referencing here to get the correct results. So I'm going to clear these and try again. I'm going to right click and choose clear contents. What I really want is to take equals the cell here of the points that John earned and divide it by this number with an adjustment. I want to absolutely choose row number two every time. So I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of two. And so now when I fill down, it's going to always reference row two for all of these assignments. And so indeed, we get the correct answers. There is 110% listed here. That is correct because Trent earned in 11 points. Now I should be able to just copy and paste these cells or use the fill command and calculate all of these numbers immediately. Notice the drug test is either 100% or 0%. And so now even though the tests are all worth different points, we scored each of them with percentages. Now it would be nice to tell at a glance which of these students or which of these employees is doing extremely well and which ones are failing. Let's highlight a, a set of test scores. Let's do the first one here. And I'm going to do conditional formatting. Conditional formatting will color the cells according to the numbers that are inside. So on my ribbon I look for conditional formatting. And in this case I'm choosing icon sets. This set here is like a set of traffic lights. It's got red, yellow, and green, and then a black one. Automatically, it puts an icon based on who's in the top set percentages and who's in the bottom. And so you can see that the green lights show up immediately with the top test scores. There's a red light for somebody that's failing, and then there's a black one for an absolute miserable score of 5. Let's try that with the next row. Let's highlight the next set and we'll choose conditional formatting and icons and choose the traffic lights again and make the box a little bit wider so you can see once again that Karen is having difficulty she received a six on the company philosophy test you have to do these all individually because each one of them has its own set of scores if you try to format them all at the same time you'll get different results. Let's choose the traffic lights again for our financial skills test and see who sorts to the top. This time you notice right away there's a black line or a black dot on blessing. She's not so good at financial skills. And for the drug test, the last one, we will format it again under icons. And feel free to experiment with the others. There's color scales and there's data bars interesting things you can see on each of them. We're just using icons for these. And so now we have little traffic lights showing us quickly who is doing well. You can see there's four green lights for John. There are some people that have mixed results in between. Now let's also make a rule that we want to sort out people that receive less than 50 percent on any test. So a quick way to find out who that is would be to highlight all of the test scores and their percentages. Let's go back to conditional formatting. Now here's a nice option, the first one called Highlight Cell Rules. Let's choose the one that says Less Than. So, in this, and we want to find out who is receiving less than, and let's put in 50%. So I can put 0.5 in here. And then the options here are light red filled with a dark red text. You can choose different options, but we'll just leave it as the first and click OK. And right away you can see that at a glance there are some people that have problems. 
less than 50% for Karen. Less than 50% on a drug test means you failed it. You got zero. Less than 50% on financial. And so we have a few of these people that are problematic. Now, since I have a concern about who should be fired, I'd like to create a, another line called fire employee with a question mark. And then we're going to say, should we fire them or not? We're going to use a formula that asks this question. Are any of these scores less than 50%? If so, then we should fire them. You should at least pass with 50%. So the formula we're looking for is called the OR formula. You type the equal sign and type OR. OR in a parenthesis. This means that we're going to ask a series of logical questions. Is some number less than another one? And if so, then we're going to return true. Watch this. I'm going to say OR. Is this score here, the safety test, less than 0.5? And I'll put a comma. And then I'll ask another question. Is I4 less than 50%? Another comma. Is this less than 0.5? And then finally, the question is, is comma, is this one less than 0.5? So I have four questions in a row. All of them ask the same thing. Is this number less than 0.5? And if I press enter, it says false. None of these scores are less than 0.5. However, when I fill down, you will see that some of these scores are less than 0.5. Here's a true and a true and a true. Once more, we can see from this, si uh, from this line, who should we fire? Who should we dismiss? Let's do a conditional formatting on this one. Let's go highlight the cells, choose conditional formatting. And this time, I'm going to ask the question, is it equal to? Is this question equal to true? If I can spell true correctly. And press enter and so now all the ones that are true are highlighted in red so we know who we should fire lastly let's put some numbers at the bottom of the chart let's go down to here and use our famous four max min average let's just use three max min and average so in this cell we ask equals this is going to be the maximum of the range that's above it. So maximum of all of these scores with a parenthesis. And let's do the same for minimum equals min, a parenthesis, and we'll ask about all of these. A parenthesis. What is the average score? Equals average, and then the cell range. And then we can use the fill right option to show what the average is for each of these. I'm going to copy all these and put them on the other side where the percentages are. Now since these are percentages, it would make sense to format them with a percent sign. Let's create a chart that shows all the graphs of each of the scores from the safety test. I'm going to highlight safety test. And now, let's go to insert. And let's choose a chart. Here's called a column chart. In the column chart, we'll just click it and we'll choose clustered columns and slide it over to the side. Now, we're missing some things on it. We need a chart title. Double click where it says title, and we can change it to call it safety test. We also need to know who are the people taking the test. We just have numbers at the bottom, so it would be nice to change that. After we have the graph on the screen, it would be nice to show the actual names of the people as well as the numbers or instead of the numbers. Right here we just have employee numbers at the bottom. Let's right click on the graph and choose select data. Now when it says here 
horizontal axis labels. Let's change that. Let's edit that. Now it's asking us what is the label range. It's asking us for a range of cells. We can either type it in or we can just simply go over here and click on Kern and drag down to Underhill. You notice as I do that, it's telling me that from sheet one, the range A4 to A20 is going to be used. And click OK. And click OK again. And so now you see all the people's names at the bottom. So we've created a test graph, the safety test. Let's do another graph. Let's do the company philosophy test. So highlight the scores. Go up to the insert button or the insert options. And let's choose another chart, another column chart. And slide it down below this one. Let's give it a new title. Let's call it the company philosophy test. Once more, we need to add these labels in so that they are in the names instead of the numbers. So let's choose Select Data. Where it says Access Labels, we'll edit that. And we need to slide over to select the people's names. So from Underhill up to Kern. And OK. And OK. Let's close this menu here and you can see the company philosophy test. One more graph, the financial skills test. Let's create that one. Same process, insert, go to charts and choose a column chart. Give it a name. And let's give the names at the bottom something instead of numbers. And let's slide this one in place below the other two. Okay, that brings us to the finish of this of this gradebook test. Let's save our document and print it. Once more, when you print, be careful that you don't print on thousands of pieces of paper. It says we're using six, so maybe I'm exaggerating. Let's change a few things. Let's orientate it so it's sideways. Let's see if we can fit this to one, one page. Once you have one page listed here, you can see all the graphs neatly arranged and your data on the left side, you're ready to print.